very much. Um, as mentioned, the theme of this panel is founding a company with a stranger. And I'm joined by Claudia Gord, COO and co-founder co of GoFriendly. Claudia, you're very welcome to the stage. Thank you so much. So can you tell us a little bit about GoFriendly? Uh, what exactly is it and how does it work? So GoFriendly is a social app designed specifically for women to find authentic connections and in real life friendships. And how it works, our members, they uh, get matched uh, with other women based on their own preferences of age, uh, location, uh, interest, um, if they have kids or not, the marital status, and so on. So that's how it works. Great. So it, it's, it's very much a social app. And um, you were talking to me backstage about how you met your co-founder through Facebook. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, what was that like? Mm. So, um, I wanted to find like-minded people uh, sharing my passion for entrepreneurship. So, I uh, posted a, well, a post on the Facebook group uh, telling a little bit about myself and what I was looking for. And then I just sat back and waited for like, will someone answer or who will answer? And uh, I got one response and it was from Ulrika, uh, my current co-founder. Uh, so, we met up for a fika. And that's Swedish for coffee and bun, or pastry. And uh, it was kind of, we were both very nervous. It's almost like going on a date. You kind of want to represent yourself in the best way. You want to be funny, smart. Um, so, but she's like really skilled when it comes to socializing. So we got really comfortable with each other. And uh, we kind of start talking about like, how hard is to find friends as an adult? Like, where do you find them? If you don't have them from college or from work, it's like so hard. So we kind of saw this gap in the market. Like, we've been using dating app for our sites for 20 years. Why not for friendship? And, you know, sitting there, two strangers, having kind of this idea put on the table, we were like, well, it's such a good idea. We cannot let it go. And I will not let you do this without me. So I think that was like the feeling of both of us. So we kind of there and then decided to do something together. Well, wow, that, that's true entrepreneurship there, just <laughs> jumping right in. I love jumping it. I love it. First. Um, so just in terms of, I suppose, um, making sure that you were on the same page, um, what kind of challenges did you face from trying to establish this company with someone you had potentially never met before? Oh, there are. So many challenges. Um, first of all, you know, having uh, the trust on each other, uh, not knowing the other person. You, you kind of need to. We had to go through a speedy process to build trust uh, when it comes to how we make decision, uh, how we handle the company money. There, there were not a lot of money in the beginning, but still. Um, also, communication. Like, how do we all communicate differently? And uh, I'm like a really direct person, uh, and she's the one, you know, how do you, how are you today? You're sending smileys and so on. So it was kind of like learning how to communicate without sounding, you know, uh, <laughs> having a conflict around that. Um, yeah, so I think that's like some of the challenges we had, decision making. How do we make decisions? We don't know each other. So in the beginning, we made like, all decisions together, big or small. It wasn't that efficient, but it was a good way for us to, to learn by the other person, to learn each other, to, to build a trust, actually. So now we, we, don't, uh, we, we don't take all the decisions together, but we trust each other 100%. And uh, from meeting your founder on social media, here's a question for you. How long was it before you actually met in person? I presume there were a lot of video calls back and forth before then. Uh, no, it wasn't. So oh. I just put it on a uh, post, and she wrote to me like, OK, I'm interested to meet up. And um, one week later, we met. And it was just setting up a time and, and planning this fika, coffee and bun. Uh, so we didn't do any, you know, start to know each other on, on Facebook or anything, video calls, no. Wow, wow. Uh, th that is a big gamble, but I think uh, it seems to me that you found the right fit. Um, speaking about your previous career, I think the audience <laughs> would love to hear a little bit about this. Um, Claudia was previously a policewoman. Um, how did you find making that leap 
from being a policewoman into entrepreneurship? Yeah, so that's a very different pattern. Um, so it was kind of me wanting to circle back to uh, the entrepreneurial me, uh, going from police officer to entrepreneur, because I always have, uh, I always been an entrepreneur at heart with a passion of building uh, meaningful, scalable products for, for uh, people. And I have some few attempts, uh, failed attempts in my backpack. Uh, one of my first idea was actually making uh, safe uh, sex cool for teenager uh, by repacking condoms. Uh, but the underlying idea for this one was actually to help a teenage girl to take away the stigma and be in charge of their own uh, health and, and, and bodies. Uh, another idea I had was to uh, was a fitness device that I worked on for one and a half year. I uh, I, I ran out of money, <laughs> energy. I was doing it all by myself, even though I had like investors interested. I had uh, uh, stores that wanted to maybe have my product, uh, but I felt like I can't do this on my own. Um, so that's like despite my passion or because of my passion, I applied to police school. Um, so they, I, I got through and I started working in Stockholm city for eight years. And you know, also there is the red line of my passion of wanting to help people. I have the possibility to uh, do a positive change in the society. Um, but it was during this time as a police officer, I kind of wanted to circle back to the true me of entrepreneurship. And that's when I posted this uh, a post on Insta, on Facebook and met Ulrike. Great, great. And uh, were there any transferable skills that you could actually bring from the police force into entrepreneurship? Because that would be really interesting if, if there were a few. I would imagine maybe leadership, communication. Um, yeah. Well, the, they are like day and night to compare. Uh, but of course, you know, feeling that I'm not putting my life at risk every time I go to work. That makes me also handling uh, things in the startup journey differently because like, this can never be worse than I've been through before on the streets. Um, but oh, yes, as you said, communication skills. We meet every part of the society as a police officer. Everyone is you know, welcome in the back of our bus. Uh, our, that's where our clients sit. Um, but also have an eye for details, uh, you know, be able to um, decision making, uh, stress management. So yeah, I think that's uh, very benefit, uh, beneficial, you know, in the startup life. So that experience really stood to you, which is great. Um, now let's go back to when you and Ulrika first met. Ulrika was your co-founder. Mm. Um, how did you ensure that you were both on the same page? You said you had meetings, um, but what about the strategy side of things? How did you map out um, where GoFriendly was to go and how it would get there? So uh, when it comes to kind of the, the vision of GoFriendly, uh, we, uh, uh, when we had this Fika, coffee and bun, we kind of easily understood the other person's uh, wish and want from, the, from a startup journey. So me having this idea that are you know, global, uh, my, glo my ideas previously were global ideas, and Ulrike on the other hand, she just moved back from, from San Francisco where she had lived with her husband uh, because he was relocated there for his startup. Uh, so she had the narrative from San Francisco and, and Palo Alto and that, that um, tech scene, meaning the whole world is your market. So that we can know, uh, we were quite a good match in, uh, in the vision part and the way forward with GoFriendly. And um, from someone who essentially join forces with the stranger on the internet. Um, for other people who are looking to set up businesses, what advice would you give to them when looking for their perfect co-founder? Does the perfect co-founder exist? Uh, and how do you go about finding them? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Uh, perfect co-founder. Well, um, first of all, I think I need to circle back to like the things we talked about, the, the shared vision, for example. Mm -hmm. You need to be aligned 
uh, because otherwise you can have two different companies in, in imagining in your head. Like one wants to uh, work for 20 years in the company, get the kids to take over, and the other one wants to perform an exit uh, within five years and sell the company. So you need to, you know, if you find someone that you're planning to start a company with, sit down and, and have the discussion because it's also, you cannot force someone into your idea on how to build things. Uh, there are no right or wrong, they're just different ways. Um, also, how you share responsibility. Uh, if you find someone, you, you want them to have different skills than you, uh, because as an entrepreneur, you, have, you need to put on so many hats, uh, especially in the beginning when you're maybe just two people. Uh, so you, you don't want to fight over the same hats. You want to be able to split and share them. Um, I don't know, in, in, in the cultural, company culture and how the values you want to bring in, you, you want to have a good match here as well. So I think these are like the basic things to look. Oh, of course, a mutual idea. But if you can check these boxes, I think you're, you have one, you have a keeper. Otherwise, be careful of... Uh, yeah. Okay, great, great. And do you believe social media is an effective tool when it comes to trying to meet like-minded people who share the same vision or the same business plan? Is it something you would recommend? Mm. Social media, uh, yes and no. It depends on what you do with the mm -hmm. media, of course, social media. Uh, I know there are like um, very inspiring uh, entrepreneurs uh, that you can follow and, and get inspired and get some ideas from, but it's what you make of it, uh, because f for many, we are just passive spectators looking at other people's lives through this never-ending feed. So if you want to find someone, you need to take action and go out there, even if it's on GoFriendly or if it's on Facebook or a networking event, you need to uh, be uh, working towards meeting someone, it will not just fall in your lap. And what other social media sites did you try before you finally hit the jackpot with Ulrika uh, through Facebook? Were you on boards or were you on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn? Um, so I went to some other platforms, uh, some activity platforms, and there were um, mixed gender platforms that, that felt kind of, you know, um, I, I got proposals, what do you call it? Sorry, um, answers from people that I might, you know, wasn't up for to meet. Um, and also some other platform I tried. Uh, I met up on a few uh, friend states and it was not a good match. So, uh, yeah, I've been trying different platforms and I had that experience with me into GoFriendly. Okay, and when you say it wasn't a good match, it's kind of interesting, really, because it sounds like you're dating for a business partner in a way. Yeah. Um, how weren't uh, those people good matches um, in terms of where you wanted to go? So we, as I, as I said before, you can have like different uh, roads ahead in what kind of company you want to create. And if someone mm -hmm. wants to make, you know, a local business, uh, I... I don't know, a, a yoga studio or something, that's, that's fine, but that's not the vision I have for my company, so that's why we were not a good match. Um, so that's, that's two different ways of building a company. You need to find someone that's on the same road. Okay, and then let's talk about the, uh, the founder relationship. So obviously it's high pressure, you know, setting up a company, um, mm. very stressful situations you find yeah. yourselves in. Um, as with all founders, there will be disagreements. Mm. How do you and Ulrika handle those disagreements as the company progresses? Mm. Yes, we had our share of disagreements, but <laughs> we've been handling them well. Um, first of all, we've always been, and this is maybe uh, uh, some ideas in all kind of uh, partnership, whoever, whatever partnerships, it's to, we always, like, I, I let her, if she has an idea on how to solve things, I let her give me her best argument, like hit me with your best argument. And I'm listening, I'm paying attention, I absorb it, and then I'm gonna give back and give my best arguments to her. And she's doing the same. 
And, and there and then we had like everything put on, on the table. We had two brains working towards solving this problem. Mm -hmm. And well, it feels like we have half a brain each now because we are so tired, you know, uh, kids and things in a startup. Uh, one brain and two hard foreheads. Uh, anyhow, so we have this here, and then we can take a decision when we have everything here. Um, so I think that's super important that we always listen to what the other person says because we always kind of circle back to the vision we have, the end goal. Mm. We know that the person is coming from a good place in how she makes decision. And, and also, if we kind of disagree on things, I can just sit down and think like, yes, Ulrika, she's a decent person, she's smart, I like her, we're doing a good job. If this is her opinion, she can represent the half of the world's population, and this is my opinion, I can represent the half of the world. If she can, let's do it her way, and half the world will be happy about it. Okay, so just brush it off. Uh, and also, if we're having a tough moment, then we just, I don't know, gossip around investors or other startups and have a good laugh, and then we're all good. Great, so it's very much a, a friendly working relationship, and you both, you're making it work, you're giving it your best shot. Yeah. Um, so just in terms of um, Go Friendly again, so uh, as we mentioned, it's a social app. Now, over the course of the pandemic, as you're aware, you know, people couldn't meet up. Yeah. But I presume after the pandemic, things might have skydived, skydived a bit for you mm -hmm. um, in terms of increased users, because everyone was suddenly looking to meet up when the world reopened um, and get out there and meet people that they hadn't met in two years, three mm. years. How did that go? Yeah, um, yeah so, dur so during this pandemic, we kind of had to scale down on all communication. Uh, we had to be really careful what we co communicated and how we communicated it. And after when, when the restriction uh, dropped, we kind of, uh, it, it wasn't for us, it, it wasn't like we had to uh, start all over again, but if you've not been in the, in the mind of people, uh, like in the, Sorry. Um, yeah, if you haven't been, you know, on top of mind, then people will forget about you, that you exist, and that's like for all the companies out there. So we just had to get back on the horse and start communicating and tell people that we're here, we're still alive. And we did see a spike in engagement. We did see a spike in, in user acquisition. And I think we are in a better place now than before the pandemic, actually. So, yeah. Wow, great. So things have really kicked off for you. That's, that, that's super to hear. And uh, just in terms of your ambitions for GoFriendly, uh, where would you like to see it in, say, five years' time? I know it's a uh, tough question. But yeah, it is. We get it from all our investors as well. Um, so uh, we, we see this. We still have this huge opportunity with GoFriendly. And there are not that many actors in this field and we have like only touched the surface of what GoFriendly can become. Uh, today we have 65% uh, market penetration in Stockholm in our core uh, target group, and that says something about the product. Uh, we have traction in uh, Norway, in Germany, in India, and we launched in London. So we are like getting uh, towards our vision and um, it's, uh, we're constantly developing our products. Uh, we are working with AI to get a better match between our members. We are using AI to, to uh, partner up, uh, give a better platform for our partners and so on. So in five years, uh, we will be expanding to so many new exciting countries. So I'm, I'm not sure where we are in five years, but definitely on our way. Uh, making our vision happen. Great. And do those expansion plans include uh, I include Ireland at all? Of course it does. Uh, I think um, having this vision, uh, Ireland is a, is a bit, bit of the puzzle here, you know, to put the vision in place. And uh, it's English-speaking uh, country. We have the, the app is in English already. And I think we are not kind of... Uh, 
uh, similar in the, the case of cultural fit for the product. Uh, so yes, definitely Ireland uh, is on top of our head when it comes to next step. Okay, great, great. And just um, in terms of your own background, as mentioned earlier, you know, you had this huge career in the police force, uh, very impressive, eight years working with the police. Mm. Um, what advice would you have to people in the audience who are considering setting up their own companies in later life? So we, we only have one life, right? So we need to make the most out of it. If you, if you have an idea that you want to work on, uh, despite that you are over 30, uh, just, just take the leap and do it. Because if you find an idea that really speaks to you, uh, that is something you can really put your, your heart and your energy and, and the effort in. Um, so, and, and find other like-minded people that, that kind of also want to take the leap or have taken the leap uh, just to, you know, get some insights, ideas on how to do it. Uh, don't be afraid and don't get stuck on something that you, you're not passionate about. Life is too short for that. Great, uh, thank you for that. And then just one quick question for you before we, we head off, I'm just conscious of time. If you could take one key learning from this whole experience of meeting your uh, co-founder on Facebook, what would it be? Um, so, key learning is, um, well, the biggest takeaway for me here, or for you, is like you doing an, a journey like this you really want to do it with someone. It's super hard and tough to do it by yourself. Uh, I have so many, I have other entrepreneur friends that are doing it alone, and that is, that's hard. Uh, you want to find someone that you can share everything with and be super transparent, but because even if you have um, employees that you feel a lot of trust for, and you can't share everything. And when shit hits the fan, they're just your employees. Uh, you're the one <laughs> have to fix everything. And if you are uh, two, it's so much easier. Uh, because that is, and, and she is one of my most important relations I have in my life. And she's not, we're not friends, we are more than friends. Yeah. That's great to hear. You have a very, uh, very interesting story, and I wish Go Friendly had the very best. Uh, thank thank you. you so much. Uh, so that was founding a company with the stranger. Thank you very much, Claudia Gord, a COO and co-founder of Go Friendly, for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you.